So this girl gets a hold of me, right? And she's like, one of these librarian ladders, would you build one for me? And I was like, hmm, you bet y'all make it. It's a librarian ladder. <laughs> All right, you guys, welcome to the den. My name is Troy, and today I'm gonna show you how to build a librarian ladder in under 15 minutes. Thanks for watching. This wasn't a planned video, this is something that just kind of came in through the woodworks. Man, this is exciting. We got the hardware right here. Came by Courier. Package really good, that's for sure. I like that. There's so much that we could say about this tracking system. Uh, we're gonna kind of hold back other than saying, you know, like this is a pretty good outfit. The only thing are the screws. You might want to consider replacing those with some other ones. But aside from that, like this thing's pretty good. The powder coat's good. The wheels are good. Yeah, it's a good unit. The alternative is to build your own. Either way, let's build a ladder. So with that housekeeping out of the way, this here is antique Douglas fir. You're just not gonna find that kind of a patina in the store. You just won't. You'll find products that'll try and make it look like this, but it doesn't. It's time to do something with these handrails. We want to determine the length of our handrails, and before we can do that, we're gonna have to set up the track. So since we have it all laid out and you got a good look at it now, it's time to put it together, get your track up there and ensure that it's level. Once the track is secured, you make your measurement from the floor up to the middle of the bar and you'll see that ours is at set at 92 inches. Take your bar height, add five inches. So our final length of our handrails are gonna be 97 inches. I know there's probably some people out there watching right now and they're like, whoa, whoa, hey, hold on a minute there, Troy, hold the phone. My bar's at 60 inches, what do I do? Uh, it's simple, my answer to that is add five inches. Promise you, everything's gonna be okay. We want the 12 degree angle at the bottom and how we're going to find that, our pivot point is right at the corner and we come over to the other side and it lines up at 12 degrees. That side with uh, the 12 degrees, that's your outside of your ladder. We'll cut a 12 degree angle at the top, the exact same angle as we did on the bottom. Uh, pencil, there it is. Hey, make a mark, uh, 11 inches all the way down for our rung placement. And all my marks at 12 degrees, every 11 inches. Now it's literally just connecting the dots from one side to the other. Yeah, we're gonna try and drop some hints in this video just to give you a, you know, a little bit of an edge on someone else that is just building one for the first time. Consider subscribing. Uh, we got builds like this coming in and out the door all the time. Rollers, let's set them into place. Okay, so we'll go over two and a quarter inches. We'll make our line. We're gonna take our square up against our 12 degree angle, line it up with the two and a quarter, and we're gonna make our line. Okay, so this is pushing your your miter saw to the limits but this is how we do it there's so many ways to make this cut you could use a jigsaw but uh, I don't know I don't like the way the the blade kind of wanders on you I want this to be exact so we're gonna use the miter saw I have it clamped down and generally what I do is have 
a sawhorse out on this side. However, we got a beautiful feature wall. Just draw around the nut. Okay, it's a good time just to test fit everything, see how it looks. Looking good. And we also have this sitting on a half inch piece of plywood. And the reason for that is that'll give us some clearance for these wheels. With all four corners cut on a 45, take that, use that as the template. This is optional, you don't have to do it this way. You could easily just do it with the palm sander. It's an extra step that we're gonna do and it's gonna help us just round our corners over because this is hard wood, right? So it also means it's hard to sand. But worthwhile mention are these rails. It's got, they've got these wicked cuts in them and you can see like it's just surface cut after we've trimmed this all down. And I'm guessing this was more like a backstop of some sort for a skill saw and they made quite a few cuts, which is gonna be super cool. Before we go and cut the dados and our handrails, we gotta think about the rungs. Uh, we want these rungs to be the exact thickness before cutting our dados. So even though like sanding this, we'll just take like, just, just feather it off. That might be enough just to give it a little bit of wobble in that ladder and we don't want that because it's a really critical moment coming up. Did you just do that? I'll pick it up. <laughs> I want to show you something about this DeWalt saw. It's a, like a trenching feature of the saw. A lot of people don't know it. It does exist, so let's give it a try. It'll seem time consuming, but if you consider how long it would take you to make up a jig for a router, I don't know, it's, it's gonna be loud. <laughs> it's gonna be loud. All right, so we wanna come down to there, and we're obviously coming lower. Flip this over, loosen the wing nut, and this is what we're going to adjust. So that's gonna go. We're getting darn close there now. Okay, check it out. I'll just go in and just fine tune it and lock it into place. Yeah, cutting one trench at a time. This is the time consuming part. You notice on the back side of uh, the work piece is that scrap piece. Uh, and you'll also notice I ended up putting a second one in because it wasn't pulling it out quite far enough. So you can see that right there. Anyways, for the most part, that's kind of how you do it. This next part is essential, and that's kind of cleaning out the bottom of the trench, right? You can see it right there, just cleaning off those grooves. So it's kind of like taking your saw to the next level, right? I don't know, a few tricks, but you can do so much with, with the miter saw. We have to have this tight, or your ladder will do this and wobble on you on the way up, and that's not cool. Yeah, definitely not cool. You want a tight ladder, right? Like that. Yeah, and then uh, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat until you're done. All right, if you kind of stick with her, give yourself a half hour or so, maybe a little more, a little less, but do pay attention, because this is kind of out of the ordinary of how this saw is used, so. That blade's spinning fast and it's spinning all the time with exposed blades. So just keep that in mind. Keep your fingers for the next project, right? Oh, hey. You have to say about a sharp pencil? Sharp pencil, sharp cuts. All right, I think we're on to the next step. Let's fasten it together, or at least prepare to fasten it. So I've made a mark on center on each of my rungs. The first two, I don't know, you can do which one. I'm gonna, I'm putting uh, two in the bottom, two in the top, and an individual's right in dead center 
uh, for the balance of the rungs. Oh, do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, there's no need to like, go back and like pause it and try and get the name of what we're using for hardware. Uh, anything in this video, uh, I put a link in the description so you can go check it out if you want to learn more. Right here, a drill press would be handy. Yeah, we just use a stop. Uh, right now, we're drilling the holes for the thread inserts, which are technically your anchors. So, not going deep enough is a huge problem. Going too deep, uh, that's okay, I guess, but we just we just put the stop on. We know we're exact every time. Yeah, so we'll just blast one through here on the centers, and we'll be ready to insert our thread inserts. And those furniture bolts, they're beautiful for this, for this project. The washer, like everything is all included in the bolt in a nice streamlined manner. It looks good at the end. So before we go ahead and put the thread inserts in, we're gonna use some speed epoxy. It's a quick set, five minutes is what it says, depending on the temperature, but yeah, five minutes or less. So we're putting this in the end grain and this is, this is antique for you guys. It's, uh, it's hard hard like a rock and it takes it no problem we just you know start into her easy back her off go back into her and we're cementing her into place i'm not worried about that squeeze out uh, i can clean that up no problem while it's still dry or while it's still wet preferably the same thing i did on that other side just snug them in gently Yeah, I think that's gonna have like super holding power. You see lots of guys pounding the thread inserts in with an impact. I don't know, it's just, it's so easy to start these things on an angle and oh, you just pretty much KO'd the whole piece after you do that, any chance of cracking. At least if you're going by hand, especially with this antique wood, you can go, you know, you can work it in, back it out, work it back in until you get it seated where you want it. So I, I would just put them in by hand. That's that's what I'd recommend. I'll continue doing it that way just because I've seen it, how well it works. It's just more control. Doesn't take that long to put these things in either, so. Mm, it, it would go tight. I don't even have to force this thing. It's just like, you, know, you can see it close the gap up right there. Beauty. Just a little movement on this one. There we go. Perfect. I'm not like I'm not cinching these down. I just want to see if they're gonna fit nice, and everything appears to fit really well. Next, I'll take these, which I could have done at an earlier step, but um, I'm gonna sand the handrails. Now try it. Staying together. Feels pretty nice. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I go up and down this thing all day. I've never been, hey, I've never been able to actually reach up here. What we ended up doing at the very end when we pieced this thing fully together, we used blue thread lock and that just helps, you know, keep everything together for longer. The bolts can always be taken out later, uh, re-thread locked and inserted because our anchor points are stronger and the blue thread lock. And just like that, you got yourself a mighty fine ladder. <laughs>